thank you for your presence. We love you. We're very grateful to be here. And we ask that you would move in our midst. Somebody say, heal me. Heal me. And deliver me. And prosper me. Because you're my father. In Jesus' name. Amen. I only find it fitting that today I would teach on God the Father. Steph, sit down here. You, you don't have to go back there. Somebody say, God, God. The, Father. the Father. One thing that happens in our culture, uh, because here in America we're pretty much a godless society, and in America it seems as if family, above all, is the mantra, even though, you know, you might not see it, but some people value their families more than anything. And the Bible shows us a family. But it only becomes clear when Jesus really shows up what a family is. And Jesus comes to show us God the Father. Amen. All throughout the Old Testament, you had El Shaddai. You had um, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah uh, Tiskanu. You had Lord. You had all Lord. You had the omnipotent God, but you never had Father. All right, all right. Jesus, after he was raised from the dead, Mary caught up to him and tried to hug him. And he told her, touch me not. For I have yet to ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Signifying that God is not just God. He is also Father. Many cultures don't understand what that actually means. And I'll, I'll tell you this in the beginning. And I'll get back to it in the end. A Father is the one that when you fall... He is not the one yelling at you, telling you to get up. God would do something like that. God would say to you, what's wrong? Get up. Your father would grab you, kiss you, dust you off, and say, now you're back up. Let's try it again. They never knew that. They only knew God. You do wrong, See, Jesus said, I've come to reveal the Father. Amen. See, and many times people, they, they get confused when they try to teach or preach on a, Trinit a Trinitarian Godhead. You don't teach it. You don't preach it. You just believe it because it's un understandable you can't understand it it's just something that's bigger than any of us in the moment you use your pea brain to explain it is the moment you make God look like he's three come on, come on, come on. Right. and that's where you blow it no God is one but Jesus said nobody knows the father but me and nobody knows the son but the father and nobody will know the father unless I Revealing. That's why you have a multiplicity of religions and all of them are trying to please God. None of them are saying father because he is not their father. What is a father? A father is it's an individual that can create or recreate himself. An exact replica of himself. See, that's when you know you've been fathered. When you are an exact replica, you have a father. Amen. When you don't have a father, you don't know who you are. Because you can't reach up. And so today we're going to begin to look at why is it so important to know God, know God more as father than God? Because you and I will make more mistakes <laughs> than we want to. And you don't need a God when you make a mistake. You need a father. The prodigal son 
wasted everything. He didn't go to God. He said, I'm going back to my father. And the Bible said the father saw him afar off, ran to him, embraced him, kissed his neck, killed the cat it fast, cat it, cat it fast, <laughs> fatted calf, because his son, who was dead, was now alive. What people don't realize, a father's joy is being a father. Amen. And I wrote this, never said this before. Those of you that heard me 150,000 times, you never heard me say this one. To Abram, being fathered was more important than being a father. See, that's where a lot of men miss it in the kingdom. We're so busy trying to father that we forget to be fathered. See, it was more important to Abram to, to obey his father by killing his son than by being his son's father and protecting him. Amen. You're not hearing me. See, and that's the mindset we have to have no matter how old you get. I need a father. I need somebody that's going to cover me. If I poo-poo on myself, my daddy's going to clean me. Yeah. Only three of you still here? Yeah. I guess this is a super ultra sanctimonious church that never pooped on themselves. Yeah. But it's your father. Yeah. See, it's the father. And that's why the enemy attacks fathers more than anything. He tries to kill sons, young men. He tries to get them out of the earth because they are the only ones that carry God's secret. A mother can't carry the secret. It's not given to the female to be the, 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 uh, the patriarch. The father. And so Jesus said, I've come to reveal the Father. See, many of us are concerned with salvation. If you're so concerned with salvation, go to a cave and wait till you die. <laughs> the end result is, you know, if, if salvation is going to heaven, if that's all you want to do, just, just go, get a, go to church, watch TV on TV, you know, watch church on TV, you know, send your money into your church, and then just go to heaven when you pass out, pass away. But for those of you that understand why Jesus came, he came for you to be fathered. And if you are properly fathered, you will live secure. Amen. I grew up in the project, so if somebody said, I'm a, you know, I'm going to get my mother on you, you still was afraid because mothers was crazy. <laughs> but when somebody said, I'm going to go get my father, everybody was nervous. See, you knew it. there was a difference when a boy said, I'm going to tell my mother. They'd be like, yeah, 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 tell your mother. But if that little boy said, I'm going to tell my father, they'd be like, <laughs> come on, I'm just trying to help you. Whenever you get in trouble, angels tell your father. The Bible says, be careful how you watch any one of these little ones. Because their angels are always beholding the face of my father. See, and your father is the one that if you make a mistake, I want you to hear this, he's the one that embraces you. He's not like your mean, nasty pastor, your mean, nasty parents that tell you, you should have known better. Just get up. That's just, no, no, no. He's like this. I know, I know what you're made of. Get up. I'm your father. Get up. I, I know why you fell. I knew you was going to fall. I'm your father. Come on, help me. That is the heart that you need to live under. You can't live under the umbrella of God. Being fearful that you made a mistake. Come on, help me. But knowing that you have a father, that, you, that if you stumble and fall, he's there, he's there to what? Pick you up. It's called father. Many of us you know, especially how many fathers, biological fathers we have here. Many of us pride ourselves in being the man of God. But you know what? There's no man of God in heaven. When you get home, you're a child of God. 
I remember when my biological father died and I did his funeral and I was pastorage, man of God. Didn't cry, didn't blink, didn't show any emotion because I had to hold it all together. Three years later in the movie theater, I, ah! I'm in the, I'm on the floor in the movie theater. Ah! Ah! He's God, he's dead. And my wife looking at me like, who? I said, my father. She said, he died three years ago. See? <laughs> the man of God was not at that movie. Couldn't protect me. The child was there. The child missed the father. See, and God is our father. And you might have your biological father. And you might miss your biological father. And it's a real legitimate void. And, you know, and only God in time heals it. But as you begin to allow your mistakes, come on, help me, to be given to God, he fathers you. Amen. He never chastises them that are crying. Come on, come on. You come praying like you big, bad, and bold when you in, when you in sin. Expect him to chastise you. But if you're crying out to God from a sincere heart of repentance, when you made a mistake, he's going to secure you. Because he's of what? He's a father. And you know, I want to say this as I begin to try to begin to try to close. God the Father gives you four things. Somebody say four things. The first one is your identity. The second one is residency. The third one is security. And the fourth one is purpose. I remember John the Baptist, Jesus' first cousin, when the Pharisees was coming to him and they wanted to get water baptized and he told them something really, really unique. He said, bring fruit to repentance. In other words, he told them, who told you to come down here to escape the judgment that's coming? Very important. He said, who told you to come down here to escape the judgment? Then he told them this, bring bring fruits, meat unto repentance. Don't just come down here to be water baptized. Repent of your behavior. And don't even say we have Abraham as our father because God can make stones turn to Abraham's children. So often, they would use Abraham as our father as their crutch. You can't touch me. I'm Abraham's child. Jesus shows up and says, if you were Abraham's children, you would not try to kill me. And he told him this, and this is something that you, we not, you and I need to be uh, aware of. He said, you have done what your father does. And then he says this real clear. Real clear. And this is really difficult for believers to, to, to say this to people, but sometimes you, when, they wanna, when worldly people want to get on your nerve, you need to just tell them the truth. They might punch in your face, but just be ready for it. Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. I do what I see my father do, and you do what you see your father do. Anybody hear me? We're all not just human anymore. While you're in the earth, some of you are more than just human. Some of you are children of God. Y'all hear? All right. You hear Abraham? I can't call. I can't keep calling you. Y'all still here? And so when you begin to think about it, you mean to tell me my father gives me my identity? You know, in England, you know, because, you know, many of us have come to America by way of slavery or whatever, and you might have somebody in England named John who had a child and his son's name was John Son. Right? William had a child and his name became William's son. Even in the Bible, everyone got their identity by being the son of someone. Right? Seth, the son of such and such. Uh, Matthias, the son of such and such. Your identity has come from your father. So even in the natural, 
you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you know, even if we were born out of wedlock, they, they asked the mother, what's the child's name? Will the child have the father's name or will it have your name? You hear me? Because the father gives the name. Y'all hear me? So our God, our father gives us his name. Maybe you're not excited. I remember when my wife got married to me, that girl had the form filled out for her name change. <laughs> she, she said, I'm gonna write you, I'm gonna write checks in your name. <laughs> Come on. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we're praying in the family name. It's not words. We're not using words. We're using our family heritage. We're using an authority that was given to us by our Father. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. See, not everybody is born cool. I was. Some of you definitely not. Still ain't even got it. You know. You, you, you see, but all of us were born again children of God. Amen. I was not born again a man of God. You were not born again a woman of God. You were born again a child Amen. of God. Amen. Amen. When Jesus sent the disciples out, they, they said, we cast out devils and by, in your name we heal the sick. And he said, don't even rejoice about that. He said, rejoice in the fact that your name is written in heaven. Yes. You, know, you know what that, that means? You know, how many here have a mailbox? Just two of you. Whose name is on that mailbox? Your name. That means you have residency. Yes, he said, listen, you got residency in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And then he began to tell them, don't even worry about that. You know, the prophets and kings desire to see what you see. Yes. See, we, we just think we're struggling. Yo, you, you, see, if you wasn't on crack, <laughs> you would be able to see I'm actually a child of God. Angels encamped all around about you. Angels are sent forth to minister to aid sons and daughters of God. Yes. Whether you pray or not, they still work. Yes. See, what happens is this, you know, when, when, a, when, the royal family, when the royal family goes anywhere, there's an entourage. There's a protection. There's protection seen and unseen. You know, even while uh, Trump is in, in, in sitting as president, he got Secret Service going before him, after him, whether you see them or not, because they have set him up as the king of this country. You're a child. See, I'm just going to say this, and don't, 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 don't black out on me. You're a legitimate child of the only king. Amen. But it's hard for you to believe that if he did not reveal that. 